Bergen Bells, as a Holocaust, I would say, is actually an expression of the power of hatred. My father emerged from the war with a deep conviction that only in freedom, under the law, within a democratic framework, can nations be protected from the kind of tyranny that produced Belson. From where he ended his final report with the words, there is one other thing that you must do, and that is to vow with all your heart that such things will never happen again. One by one, the survivors were moved out to a displaced persons camp down the road. The British then set fire to the huts to eliminate every trace of disease. On May the 21st, the last one was raised. I remember that very well. When they burned down the last hut, yes, I was there, I saw it. It was a great pleasure. It was something of a symbolic death, but Bergen-Belsen had an afterlife, which endures to this day. You should have left it. Eve. You never did listen to me. I'm so sorry, Eve. What did he do to you? What did he make you do? Make me? All of that. You were gone for so long. He had me all to himself. You abandoned me. Eve, he's gone now. You don't have to do this anymore. not that simple. He made me what I am. And now I have to take care of you the same way I took care of him.
I told you nothing good would come of this. your freedom. I stopped you before you confessed. You're gonna be fine. You see, my father abused my mother too. More physically than emotionally like yours. But what I'm trying to say is that I understand why you think the way you do. And I can help you. I can get you help. is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress, the hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people, and so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes, men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, or what to feel, who drill you, tie at you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men, with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines, you are not cattle, you are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power, the power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You the people have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power, let us all unite.
Mr. Holmes, apologies for summoning you like this. I'm sure it's quite a mystery as to where you are and who I am. As to where I am, I was admittedly lost for a moment between Charing Cross and Holborn, but I was saved by the bread shop on Saffron Hill, the only baker to use a certain French glaze on my nose, the Brittany Sage. After that, the carriage fork left and right, the telltale bump, the fleet conduit, and as to who you are, that took every ounce of my not inconsiderable experience. Let us on your desk, which dressed us, Thomas Rotherham. Oh, Chief Justice, that'd be official to who you really are. It's, of course, not a matter of time. Judging by the sacred ox on your ring, you're also the secret head of the Temple of the Four Orders, and whose headquarters we now sit on the Northwest Hall of St. James Square, I think. As to the mystery, the only mystery is why you bother to bluff me in the hole. Yes, well, standard procedure, I suppose.